Hi, I'm Charles with AnyCap. Previously, we saw that Shu awakened a mysterious power that allows him to earn points from people's negative emotions. With these points, he is able to purchase fruits that greatly increase his training efficiency. Shu and his awakened class would then be teleported to a dangerous ruin. He then goes to search for the Foundation Eye as that is the only way for everyone to be freed. The story continues as Shu has just defeated all the undead in front of everyone. He is surprised to hear that the network member knows his name and so he explains that a couple students are aware of who he is. Shu is clearly worried about his weapons but they assure him that they will not steal them. Shu asks if that means he can keep the spears as well and the man again promises not to take anything at all. Shu explains that he is alone and wonders why their group didn't join the battle sooner, not realizing that he ended the fight too fast for that to happen. He doesn't want to share the weapon since none of them actually participated in the fight but realizes he can't really use them all, so he then reveals his plan to sell them for an affordable price. His sales pitch manages to attract his first customer but he reveals he has no cash and would like to pay when they get out. Shu declines but offers to take the man's pendant instead, which only ends their negotiation. However, someone else steps up, offering their very valuable watch and Shu gladly accepts. Trade offers then begin to flow in. Shu explains how much more dangerous the rest of the journey will be and how much safer they will feel with one of his weapons. Shu gives the best weapons to those who have clearly fought hard on the front lines and offers up a rusty old axe to a guy who Shu believes to have not risked his life at all. Shu gives an intimidating display of the axe's usefulness and the guy accepts. Later, Shu admires his new collection and declines any help to carry all his goods. Their journey continues and after the temperature begins to drop quickly, Shu wonders if that means they are getting closer to the core of the ruins. The group leader explains that he is correct, as they began to encounter more people as everyone attempted to reach the center. He then reveals that many network members had died along the way, but all the students managed to survive, which makes it clear to Shu that the members had given their lives to protect the students. Shu wonders if it was worth it, and the leader explains that if you're wondering whether it's worth it, you've already lost. During a break, it becomes obvious that the network members are famished, so Shu gives them the fruits he picked earlier, explaining that they will recharge everyone's power. They divide up the fruit and are ecstatic to see that their thirst, hunger, and tiredness have all gone away. Some students wonder why they didn't get any, and Shu explains that he gave fruit to the ones who have been risking their lives to protect them. However, when one man offers the most valuable item so far in exchange for a fruit, Shu can't help but accept explaining that he can now take Le Xiao on a trip since she has never been out of town. The students talk about how greedy Shu is and how he seems to only live for money, which only makes it clear to him that they must never have been poor. Just then, several spirits appear and Shu notices how similar they are to Le Xiao's spirits. Shu's sword called the Corpse Dog then begins to react to the spirits and acts on its own but Shu tries to hold it back since he doesn't want to reveal his powers in front of everyone. Their group prepare for an attack, but the spirits become frightened of Shu and retreat. He determines that the corpse dog must be the enemy of the spirits since Le Xiao's pig had a similar reaction, and that this means he should be able to detect the spirits in the future as well. They seem to have reached the core of the ruins, and one student recounts the story of how he had only survived because of Chao, who he explains is the only person in the city with level A potential. He also credits her with leaving them some weapons since one sword and spear is all she needed. He spots her in the distance but is distracted once he sees Shu with all his weapons. Shu opens up his shop again and some students ask if he knows the person who had defeated the cavalry leader. Shu would much rather talk about how valuable his weapons are and the student is disappointed to realize that he is the person he was talking about. Shu explains that his weapons are so valuable that they may even be exchanged outside of the ruins for secret training techniques, which bring even more demand than before. However, business is interrupted when he is called to join a meeting the network is having. Shu arrives covered in valuables and Mr. Fei introduces him to the level C member named Yu Tang, who is filling in for Li Sha as the commander in the ruins. He explains that Shu and Chao manage to stand out from the rest while in the ruins and hopes they will follow his command. Yu Tang then reveals a flying sword of his own and Mr. Fei explains that it is a blood nurtured sword that only level C's can use. Shu asks if someone could have more than one and he says that they could, but it would only result in an insufficient blood supply. However, Shu is relieved since his corpse dog doesn't need anything. Yu Tan recalls his sword and explains that the hole is 100 meters deep with a cave at the bottom, but they should wait for Li Sha before proceeding. Later, Shu checks the logs of the points he has received for anyone with numbers instead of names and determines that there are at least 9 spies among their group. 
Just then, Li Sha arrives with an entire fruit tree and compliments Xu on his style. The leader of the squirrels appears and expresses its displeasure towards Li Sha, but is distracted when it recognizes Xu's laugh. Xu manages to survive its attack and Li Sha realizes Xu must have taken some of the fruits as well. Later, Li Sha explains that his level C companions had both been killed along with many other level Cs, but they managed to kill all the enemies as well. We then see that the squirrel is in utter despair as it must watch its precious fruits be eaten by the humans, but is able to find happiness again when Shu gives it one. Shu is then reunited with Jiang who explains that he managed to kill four horsemen, and Shu shows how he has done pretty well for himself also. They are interrupted when someone demands that Shu give him a weapon, claiming that he will pay him 50,000 yuan when they get out, and is disappointed when he is rejected. Shu notices however that the man doesn't have a name and realizes he must be a spy. Shu says he doesn't take promises as payment and he leaves. Later, Li Sha gathers everyone and explains that they should all rest well, as tomorrow they explore the opening. The plan will simply be that everyone follow him to success, and rejects the idea that the plan should be more detailed. Later, Shu figures out that one negative emotion point from Li Shao means she missed him, and ten means something reminded her of him. All the hundreds are when she is upset he hasn't returned yet. However, he is most shocked to see 777 points and wonders if she hates him now. While everyone sleeps, the group of spies enter the hole, but the one we saw earlier is stopped by Shu, who asks if he plans to take everything for himself. Shu says that he will come along and they will split the findings, 30 for him and 70 for Shu. The guy agrees but explains that Shu should get some others to help as well. Shu leaves and the guy believes to have fooled Shu only to find that he hasn't. The other spies ignore the fact that one of them is missing and the guy begins his attack on Shu. Shu manages to avoid the attack easily and very loudly asks what his intentions are. He goes on screaming about the guy's intention to take the formation eye and everyone wakes up. Just then, Li Sha appears and attacks the man explaining that he was a spy. His plan from the beginning was to tell everyone to sleep so that the impatient spies would be tempted to go ahead of everyone. Everyone is impressed, but Shu questions if they should have left him alive for questioning. Li Sha then commands that all the students that are not strong enough will stay and be protected by Yu Tang, while the rest descend into the ruins. Furthermore, they are to find who is missing from the network to determine the identities of the spies. Yu Tang agrees to stay but asks that he be informed of any secret plans that Li Sha comes up with in the future. Yu Tang would then give a speech explaining that the priority is to protect their own lives. He tells them that Li Sha is much more powerful than them and that there will be times when they can't follow him wherever he goes, so they must use their heads when things go bad. Later, Li Sha admires Xu's collection and remarks how tiring it must be to carry all those watches, but Xu says it's not. Shu refuses to let him help carry the gold chain as well, so Li Sha instead asks to go into business together. He explains that several ruins will be opening up soon and that the amount Shu has just made could be multiplied several times over. Shu is a student though and will not be granted access to the ruins, but Li Sha can get him in. In this business, Shu would get 10% and Li Sha 90, so Shu says that he should be more generous, referencing the common saying, smile generously. Shu goes on to say that he is such a low level and will be at more risk, so it would only be fair to split everything 50-50. This only upsets Li Sha since Shu can't even enter ruins alone, but Shu says he has earned enough money already and doesn't need to risk himself for more. Li Sha begrudgingly agrees but warns that he will end their partnership if Shu proves to be too weak, and asks that he not hide anything. Shu claims that he is not that greedy and Li Sha asks for a gold chain to celebrate their new partnership, but is declined. Later, Li Sha attempts to give a motivating speech but fails miserably when trying to quote the old saying Shu mentioned earlier. As the group descend, Shu notices that lights that cannot be seen from above illuminate the abyss. When they reach the bottom, they find that the spies from earlier have killed themselves, but Shu thinks to himself how he doesn't think it's that simple. They make their way further and reach a castle, only to find that they have been trapped. Several spirits appear from the crystals surrounding them and Li Sha attempts to push them back. There are too many of them to take out on his own, but Mr. Fei determines that they are not very strong, and encourages everyone to fight. Shu is eager to fight as well, but the spirits run from him, which only infuriates Shu. After managing to chase some down, Shu sees that his corpse dog is absorbing the defeated spirits, making him fight even harder. 
Just then, a ghost resembling the dead spy from the center of the ritual appears and kills someone. Shu determines that the ritual is for sacrificing the other spies to make this one into a powerful spirit. Li Sha uses his massive power to get rid of all the weaker spirits. It is explained that the man at the center of the ritual is named Zhao, and that he had originally been a level D but seems to have now reached the peak of a level C. This is because Zhao had been doing research on abilities that allow someone to absorb other people's energy after death to increase their own power. Shu thinks about how absorbing spirits is kinda like what Le Shao does when his corpse dog tells Shu to attack to his left. He doesn't see anything but is surprised to find that he actually hits Zhao. Everyone is stunned and Li Sha wants to know how he did it, but Shu tries to explain he was just swinging randomly. He promises he isn't lying and picks a random spot this time, only to find that he was right again. The next few guesses hit nothing and convince everyone he wasn't lying. Just then, zombies emerge and their leader is upset that they have broken into its castle, demanding that they must now stay forever. Li Sha commands everyone to leave the leader to him since he believes the spear in its hand could be the formation eye, and seizing it would make the ruin disappear. Li Sha initiates the battle and manages to dismount the leader which only infuriates it. The rest of the group join the fight and Shu demonstrates his ability with the spears. Just as he is about to be hit with an arrow, Chao arrives to stop it and shows off some strength of her own. After another zombie runs away from him, Shu begins to lament having the seemingly invincible corpse dog. He realizes that all the zombies have left the castle and that it is the perfect opportunity to look inside for valuables. Further in, the corpse dog begins to react and Shu believes that Zhao must be holding a grudge for finding him earlier. He then receives negative emotion points from Le Shao, but this time they have messages attached to them. She exclaims about how he has not returned yet and lied about only being away for a couple of days. While Shu is distracted, Zhao attempts a surprise attack, but he reacts quickly and counters it, finally putting an end to Zhao. Outside, the ferocious battle between the level C Li Shao and powerful zombie ruler continues. Eventually, Li Shao manages to get a hold of the spear and vows to never let it go. We then see that Shu has reached the city center and believes that since nothing was found so far, there must be something good inside. After entering, Shu stares at some spears and notices that they are longer and more advanced than his. However, before he can grab one, the statues begin to move. Shu's corpse dog emerges and once again his opponents back down. He can see that the statue is still active but prepares to add more spears to his collection anyway. Yet when he grabs one, the statue refuses to let go, so Shu resorts to threatening it with the corpse dog, which works instantly. He goes on to collect some more and we go back to see the battle outside. The lower level members need Li Shao's help fighting the zombies, but he can't pass up the opportunity to get the ruler's spear, which still proves to be difficult. Just when it seems as though one of the members is about to die, Chao appears to rescue him in the blink of an eye with her exceptional swordsmanship. In that moment, the ruler seems to have gained the upper hand but Li Shao still refuses to let go of the spear. The ruler traps him with its power but Li Sha manages to force his way out and grab the spear yet again. We then see that Shu has stumbled upon some writing and wonders if it is some kind of riddle. His discovery seems to bother the ruler causing it to ditch the spear and run back to the castle. Li Sha realizes that it must mean the spear is not the formation eye and chases after it. The ruler is disappointed to see that his statues have lost their spears but still commands them to kill Li Sha. Outside, the battle is going very poorly and the network members question how much longer they can last. The ruler walks in just as Shu grabs something and drops it. We see that some network members have accepted their fate just as Shu attempts to catch the falling item. In typical Shu-like fashion, that dropped item is called the Mountain and River Seal, which just so happens to be the Formation Eye. Upon grabbing it, everything except Shu freezes and slowly begins to disintegrate. All the fragments begin to make their way to the Formation Eye that is now in Shu's possession. After everything has been taken in, the Formation Eye is absorbed into Shu, and he disappears as well. At the base of the mountain, everyone's families are happy to see the fog lifting and everyone reappearing. We then see that Jiang desperately searches for Shu and Chao does the same. Elsewhere, Li Sha attempts to avoid speaking to the media since news got out of the incident, and he explains that he must urgently speak with Ting. Jiang's search results in the student Shu sold the rusty axe to complaining about how greedy he was. Some other students talk poorly about him as well and laugh at the thought of Shu being killed. 
Lee is there as well and is annoyed to hear them. He tells Mr. Fei that the two of them were close and offers to help search to find Chu's body. However, at that moment, Chu and his excessive amounts of jewelry arrive to greet Jiang. Chao explained to him that he needed to go there to register and drop off his weapons. Xu takes a moment to point out how swollen Li's face has gotten, earning him some easy points once again, and then deposits his weapons. Xu receives several points from the Xiao as he heads home and spots a trail of potato chips that lead to a tree. He sees her on it and prepares himself for a warm welcome. However, that feeling quickly turns to fear when he sees that she is not happy at all and hits him in the face. He wants to know if she has been eating properly, but she only cares about checking him for injuries as usual. She can't help but cry after seeing that he is without a scratch and has returned home safely. They hug as he apologizes for leaving her in the first place and she storms off. Shu catches up to her and tries to show her all the valuables he managed to get, but she is disinterested. He explains that he saw many spirits and discovered that he is able to absorb them, but again, she couldn't care less. He mentions how it was similar to her pig spirit, which gets a reaction out of her, and he uses that opportunity to promise to take her out for a delicious dinner the next day. She accepts and the two finally head home together. They run into Master Li and he says that Xu should take some time off from training after this whole ordeal, but Xu says that won't be necessary since training will be peaceful compared to the excitement of the ruins. He goes on to thank Master Li for training him so much as that gave him a great advantage in all his fights. Furthermore, they were the ones that took care of Le Xiao, but they say it was no problem and that Le Xiao had gone out every night to look for him. Later, Xu asks Le Xiao to take out her D-level spirit and shows her the pearls he has obtained. He explains that they were made by the corpse dog. The black one came from absorbing spirits and the other came from a more special kind of energy source. The corpse dog spoke to him and told him that the pearls are meant to be food for spirits. They feed the black pearl to the spirit and find that it has raised its power to the midpoint of level D, however it seems to have the odd side effect of making it laugh uncontrollably. Le Xiao exclaims how first he heard her pig and now has made her new spirit go crazy. His next gift is some of the fruit he brought back from the ruins which he devours, much to the dismay of Xu's large squirrel friend. She thinks it's adorable and names it Fatty, but changes it to Little Fierce Sue when she sees it doesn't like being made fun of for his size. She sees that Sue likes chips, so she uses them to bribe it into being her follower. Shu can't believe how easy Sue offered obedience after just one chip. That night, Shu gazes into the seal and finds that it allows him to observe the entire city. It also allows him to control all the spirit power that emanates from the city. However, he laments the fact that his ability doesn't use spirit power to level up. He returns to find that the seal also seems to have some type of storage space. He finds a gate that he is unable to open at his current strength, but determines that he absorbed the ruins and getting in will unlock more fortunes. Le Xiao desperately wakes him up as she was concerned he would leave her again. But he calms her by promising to buy appliances for the house and even go on trips using their new wealth. Elsewhere, Eugene explains to Ting that Li Sha believes the spy was the one who took the formation eye, but isn't able to confirm it. Ting reveals that the seal is able to evoke the aura of the earth, and he has sent two members to the city so that they can detect any unusual flow of spirit power. Eugene expresses his disappointment in the performances of Li Sha and the Yuan class, as many people ended up dying. Ting explains that the path of the awakened has always been paved with bones and that those who are afraid to die should not pursue further development. Yujin says that Yu Tang did however mention that there were two outstanding students named Xu and Chao. Ting is intrigued and explains that they need better training for the students. He explains that change is finally coming as the war between heaven and earth draws near. Xu and the Xiao watch fireworks for a moment then decide to go inside to watch something new on TV. Thank you for watching the season 1 finale. There is currently no release date for this anime's second season, but I will make more recaps as soon as it airs. I also wanted to thank everyone for subscribing since we just hit 100,000. So thank you.